Dr. Dr. Um, Anton Bopo has already introduced himself. And he's going to share with us his reflection about the homeopathic dandam. Good morning. Uh, I hope you slept well. Thank you very much for attending to my report in the early morning. This is all necessary information for what am I in homeopathy. And next slide illustrated in what family I was born. This is my grandfather. His professional life lasted very long, over 60 years. Since 1930, he started learning homeopathy, which took his interest when he was a student. The first books were organized by Gunman and their leading symptoms of our therapeutics by Nash. In 1935, he moved to Kiev and arranged his private practice. There was a unique case in the Soviet Union where private practice was forbidden. The Mensopov usually consulted about 150 and 200 patients daily. His theoretical legacy and enormous activity has led to the foundation to trend of Kiev's homeopathic school. The most important principles of it are using of high or very high potencies, taking case and according with totality of symptoms, including medical examination, using materia medica, treatment independence of aggravation and prognosis of disease. He believed that homeopathy should exist as only as a branch of whole medicine. Here it is my mother, Tatiana Popov. He was a chief doctor of the first homeopathic clinic in Ukraine. It was in 1987. She made a great effort to popularize homeopathy and, and founded postgraduate first postgraduate homeopathic school for the doctors. She is the author of many homeopathic books. One of them became a homeopathic bestseller, translated and published in Ukrainian, Russian, French, Czech Republic, and Germany. And this is my office in Kiev. It's very large and convenient. And this is information for contact with me. Available language is here. Uh, just now, I am going to talk about the extension of homeopathic paradigm. Homeopathic paradigm commonly viewed as one to has to do with bodily and mental healing only. In fact, homeopathy does more than that. There is a sufficient evidence in my practice to assume that the homeopathic paradigm is not confined to healing, with the patient regaining his physical and mental health. It extends to a patient sustaining vitality. Vitality is defined as abundant physical and mental energy, usually combined with a joyous approach to situation and activities. Sustaining vitality can, therefore, be described as fitting the mind to a new positive way of thinking and seeing the world. The consistently refined effects of homeopathic treatment confirm the assumption. Patient self-reported noticeable positive change in their lives and financial status, such as mentioned relations with family, friends, business, and sex partners, emergency of new interests, hobbies, ideas, zest for life. A change in life is not synonymous with healing is a commonly accepted meaning of the term. Thus, we can conclude 
that homeopathy helps to channel a patient's mind and balances the mind and body. Thereover, it gives an opportunity to identify oneself. The means, the means acting with the natural inclinations, it which is the right in a compass leading one's out of life's maze. For a variety of courses, many people tend to choose wrong roads in life, exposed to multiple in influence, parental, social, religious, political, assailed by fears and odds, frustrated by failures to attain goals. People tend to develop destructive habits like alcohol or drugs abuse. An appropriate homeopathic prescription is then the best assistance. In this discourse, we are talking about the constitutional remedy. It does more than just ending physical suffering or giving psychological comfort. Homeopathic remedy triggers one's vitality. The physical and mental symptoms of pathogenesis present in most homeopathic medicines can serve as stepping stone for discovering still unsufficiently investigated human capacities, and ultimately for determining one's predestination. The use of term predestination is not spiritual or religious. Predestination does not mean fate, karma, or mission. It is important for me to emphasize that predestination is a normal part of life. Predestination is what keeps everything going. It is what generates to motivation to live, to create, to love, to explore, and to be fulfilled. At this point, it would be well to recall the definition of vitality outlined by Hanuman. According to him, vital force creates preconditions in order to our undwelling reason gives mind to freely employ this living health instrument for the higher purposes of our existence. It is obvious that higher purposes of our existence are comparable with our destiny at predestination. A similar concept underlines logotherapy Psychological Science based by Viktor Frankl. In his view, the primary motivation force as an, as an individual is to find a meaning in life. Our destination creates a field around our life, which sensitive people can feel as ours. A man's occupation is a template for our imagination and its manifestations. The ease with which vital energy flows through our body determines the way we expose ourselves to the world. When we are stuck in a particular sense of our attitude to life, the vital energy is blocked and stagnant. A wrongly chosen profession or career manifests this stagnation. Some people force by circumstances to take jobs which are considered prestigious or lucrative, but they dislike the chosen path. Being happy is for most of us is one of the key aims in life. However, we often go wrong in figuring out which path take to achieve happiness. In the areas where neither psychology nor psychiatry can detect pathology, homeopathy reveals its deviation by linking it with one's daily happening. This is because unfortunately, unfortunate events and wrong predestination signify disease, while fortunate events and the right path in life, signal health. 
I believe that in perspective homeopathic pathogenesis, besides the physical and mental symptoms, should include information about the patient's lifestyle and predestination. Here are, some, here are a few examples by way of illustration. A certain musician suffering from mycosis of nails came to seek counsel about it. He complained about his bad luck. His life was hell. All things had gone wrong. To take, he, take, he took drinking, was dismissed from work, get divorced, tried some business but went bankrupt. After taking Cetizagria 200C, however, his life took a turn for the better. The effect of prescription was amazing. He took to up religion, married a new, resumed his job as a musician. He was living again, enjoying life. But my causes of nails improved only slightly through. Another case. A poet came to a consultation with complaints of psoriasis and about his misfortune. Her publishers did not publish her poems. Her charity fund stopped to receive money. She broke communication with many people because of her skin disorders. After having a prescription for Cetil 1000, things unexpectedly changed. Her poems got printed. New investors started to support the poem, and the old friends returned to her. Again, there was no improvement with students. Another patient, an engineer, turned to homeopathy with complaints about stomach ulcer and depression. The effect of Nuxlomica 1000C prescribed him was also unexpected. He quoted his well-paid job and joined a crew of sailors working on a ship. The patient confessed that he had dreamed about the sea of his life. His stomach says to bother him, depression did not recur. Still another patient, a businessman, came to a consultation complaining of hypertension and the feeling of sadness. After taking the hour of the 1000C prescribed him, the patient suddenly made up his mind to change his life completely. He moved from Ukraine to Africa, started to work in a gold mine. Also, he still, he still has some business troubles, his blood pressure stabilized, he enjoyed a new passion. An allopathic physician who was afflicted with chronic kidney disease asked me for help. He had some serious mental disorders. He was dissatisfied with his medical occupation, but had no idea of how to change his life. He was too worried about kidney disease. After taking the homeopathic treatment, prescribed him Mercurius salubris. Uh, 200C, his kidney function was improved. His spirits were raised. He abandoned medical practice, took up easel painting, staged a studio in the attic of his house, and eventually became a rather successful artist. Unfortunately, such facts are not recognized by medical statistics because they cannot be scientifically proven. The double blind, the double blind research is inapplicable here in view of the imminent variety of human destinies. At the beginning of my homeopathic career, 30 years ago, I had no idea that homeopathy has the power to change the lives of patients. I thought that it was able to treat mental problem only. Nevertheless, 
the action of homeopathy is much more significant than mentally treating one's mind. One of the goals of homeopathy, homeopathy treatment is a clear comprehension of one's life's purpose. That destination and intentionality which all together contribute to the feeling that life is meaningful. A healthy life induced such important stimuli as strong motivation, dedication to one's cause and life value. The matter of fact, the awareness of one's predestination pushes many somatic disorders into the bank, into the background. What is more, the ability to dis disregard painful symptoms is in itself a symptom of happiness when the outcome of treatment can be viewed as successful. To sum up, we can deduce that homeopathy helps to channel a patient's mind along the path of destiny for him. It gives an opportunity to identify oneself, to act in line with one's natural inclination, in other words, to be true to oneself. In conclusion, I feel inclined to quote Shakespeare a famous phrase, which echoes the main idea of this report. This, about all, to think on self be true. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sure that uh, everyone in, in this room uh, had cases like this and we always ask him what's happening in fact. Do you have questions? How do you choose the potencies? I learn few potencies to do country, 1,000, 10,000 and, and, and more. How you do this? To I trust, I trust all potential. The, the first question in my party is a question, what uh, is the choice of the remedy? Okay. The second question about, in the question of potency is the second. Everything, everything depends on the clinic situation. Everything depends on what pathology, in what location, mental or physical. Congratulations, uh, Dr. Anton and Dr. Pawan Parikh from India. First of all, I would like to thank you for a very good presentation. Thanks. And as you have added, uh, homeopathy not only treats the mental and the physical well-being, but it increases the vitality. I would like to add to it that if the constitutional medicine is given to the patient, it even saves from cancer too. I would like to add this to it. And the another question is, during your presentation, you said that a medical doctor who was suffering from kidney disease and mercurius was prescribed. I would like to know the mercurius, whether the mercurius solubilis was prescribed or mercor was prescribed, question number one. And question number two is, what was the condition? Which stage of kidney disease was? What was the blood urea and serum creatinine level was there before treatment and after the prescription of, of the mercurius? Um, thanks for your question. I don't uh, remember this case. Uh, it was the first stage of kidney suspicion, of course. It was not prolonged, prolonged uh, um, uh, kidney insufficient. It was on the first stage. Uh, why I prefer in this case Mercurius Solubilis. Maybe it was some mental symptoms. The, uh, because the mental symptoms uh, is, uh, satisfied myself to different between Mercurius Solubilis and Mercurius Carotidus. Uh, you are quite right, the most, most uh, suitable, suitable 
a remedy for kidney cessation with mercury sclerosis. But in this case, I prefer mercury sclerosis because some mental symptoms. Yes, that's what uh, I have seen in my busy clinical practice. The kidney diseases, it is an irreversible pathology, but I am lecturing all over the world, giving presentation, seminar on renal failure. So what I have seen, that if a patient. Thank you. Thank you. that um, this sort of um, casuistics of case uh, presentations uh, can't be studied scientifically. You are right in dealing with a conventional uh, paradigm which is in use until now, which is a quantitative approach. You can't measure these by quality of life or by any um, laboratory data or scans. But there's another way to approach um, these um, human development individually. And it's a qualitative approach. That's something like narrative uh, medicine. And that's what we are doing every day in our practice. That's another sort of science. Not measuring with so-called objective uh, data, but uh, having insight into the de individual development. And that's always something like case taking and case reporting. And that's also science. And that's uh, in my uh, point of view. Thank you.